Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you It Started With Eve, starring Charles Lawton, Dick Powell, and Susanna Foster. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. When in the early months of June, our troops stormed ashore in Normandy and after bitter fighting established their positions, they later returned behind the lines and saw the first American motion picture to follow the invasion into France. It was Universal's feature comedy. It started with Eve, tonight's play on the Lux Radio Theater. What it meant to our battle-weary troops in relaxation and diversion and what it meant to French civilians after four harsh years of German occupation, was summed up in a cable to Charles Lawton, ending with the words, they loved it. I think you'll understand why when you hear tonight's play. It's a rollicking story of a young man caught between two sweethearts and a much too energetic father who insists on complicating matters. We star Charles Lawton in his original screen role, and Susanna Foster, the lovely universal singing star, and also that versatile gentleman of screen and radio, Dick Powell. Of course, good entertainment isn't the only thing that will follow our invading armies into France. Soon, such simple luxuries as Lux Flakes will be back again to help thrifty Parisians keep up their tradition of good grooming. Meanwhile, the Office of War Information permits me to reveal that Lux Flakes are doing something else to brighten the lives of French civilians. They're bringing in the same fine radio entertainment that you enjoy, because the OWI is recording and broadcasting many of these plays in French as a friendly gesture from the people of America. Now here's the curtain for the first act of It Started With Eve, starring Charles Lawton as Jonathan Reynolds, Susanna Foster as Anne, and Dick Powell as Johnny. Up New York's Fifth Avenue, a taxicab speeds through the damp and foggy night swerves into a spacious driveway and comes to a grinding halt in front of a towering mansion. The shiny wet walk reflects the splinter of light from a second-story window. It's a dim light, for in the room beyond the window, the fabulous Jonathan Reynolds is dying. A young man dashes out of the taxi cab, brushes by a huddle of newspaper reporters and bounds up the broad staircase to the second floor. I came as fast as I could. How is he, Doctor? Not so good, Johnny. Well, he has a chance, hasn't he? Your father's had a rich, full life. Man couldn't ask for more. Oh, I had no idea it was this serious. Come on, we'll go to his room. Hello, Dad. Well, Dad, I... I made it. Johnny. That's a fine thing. I go to Mexico for a few weeks, and you fold up on me. I knew you'd come, Johnny. And I'm going right back, as soon as you're up again, and you're coming with me. Johnny. Dr. Harvey told me you'll be as good as new in a week. Johnny... Tell me about her. Her? The girl you're going to marry. Oh. Well, Gloria's wonderful, Dad. She and her mother were in Mexico, too. Why didn't you bring her here? Well, I left her at the hotel. I, I figured that... You want to see her? Well, of course, Dad. First thing in the morning. No. Bring her to me now. Well, sure, Dad, sure. I'll get her right away. It might be too late in the morning. He's right, Johnny. I'm afraid it's a matter of hours. She will come over, won't she? Your fiancé? Oh, of course. I'll rush over to the hotel right away. Hurry, Johnny. Hurry. But there's no answer on the house phone. Why don't you try again, please? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Reynolds, but Miss Pennington must be out. Well, maybe she's in her mother's room. We've already rung there, sir. Would you like me to have her page? Oh, yes, yes. Please, please. I've got to find her. My father's... Oh, it's very important. Front. Yes, sir. Page Miss Gloria Pennington. And hurry, please. Here. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, I'll look page around the lobby Ms. myself. Pennington, please. Check your coat, sir. Coat? What did you say? Check your coat. No, 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 thanks. I, I, I was just looking for someone. I thought if I stood near the entrance here... That... Make yourself at home. Oh, Mr. Reynolds. Yes? Uh, sorry, sir, but I've tried everywhere. Well, isn't there some place else I've got to find her? Well, if you want to wait here, sir, I'll keep on trying. Been stood up, mister? No, no, nothing like that. It's just that I... Oh, look, miss. I wonder if you'd do me a favor, a tremendous favor. I'm sorry, but I just got relieved. 
I'm going home. Well, it's fine, and you can do it. I've got to get a hold of a girl. No, just a minute. Now, please don't misunderstand. I, I, I've got to bring a girl home. Any girl will do. I'll give you $50. What? Well, don't you see? My father's dying. I'll explain everything on the way, and I'll give you anything. Only please come now, please. Well, I, I can't. Well, thanks. I... Thanks. <laughs> She is, Dad. This is Gloria. How... How do you do? Come here, child. I... I had to see you. I've been worried what kind of a girl Johnny would marry. Well... Well, I... Yes. Yes, I believe he's finally picked the right one. Johnny is a good boy. I've spoiled him, of course... Don't you spoil him, too? Uh, Dad, why don't you rest? Watch out for him, for me, Gloria, won't you? Promise. I... I promise. My, but you're pretty. Thank you. You know, there's nothing to be said about nothing. I've had a good life. Oh, Dad, uh, the doctor said we could stay only a minute. Yes. And the nurse will call me if there's anything you want. Uh, we better go now. Thank you for coming, Gloria. He seems such a wonderful man. Well, he is a wonderful man. Oh, if only I'd been a better son to him. Mr. Johnson, Miss Gloria Pennington's on the phone. Will you take it here, sir? Thanks. Well, I... I guess I'll go along. Well, I'll just be a minute. I'll get our chauffeur for you. Oh, hello, Gloria. Oh, that's all right. No, no, Father wanted to see you. Well, it's a little late now. No, 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 just about the same. I'll give her my love. You too, darling. Bye-bye. That was the girl I was looking for in the hotel. Oh. I want to thank you for what you did for me. Oh, that's all right. I'm glad I was able to help. Oh, wait. Uh, I offered you some money. How much was it? Well, you said $50. I, I feel awful taking money for something like this. No, you mustn't say that. Here. I, I wouldn't take it except I haven't seen my folks for so long. Most of the money I make goes for singing lessons. This will just about do it. I can get the first train in the morning. It's fine. Where are you from? Shelbyville, Ohio. Mm. Well, it was a very nice thing you did for me tonight. Thanks again. Well, good morning, Dr. Harvey. Good morning, Johnny. Breakfast? Thanks. Just just some hot water and a little lemon juice. No coffee? Oh, no, 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 no. My nerves shot to pieces. Mm, Dad used to drink six cups of coffee for breakfast. Incredible man. I, I simply don't understand what's keeping him alive. I stayed in his room last night. He, he slept quite soundly. Yes, he's still sleeping. I guess I should hope that he, he never wakes up. He won't suffer then. I'm afraid that's the most we can hope for, son. I told Miss Dimnoggin to call us the second... Dr. He... Harvey! Doctor, where are you? It's happened. That's the nurse. Miss Dimnoggin! Doctor! You must come upstairs immediately. Nurse, you mean... Mr. Reynolds just... just pinched me. What? He's delirious. He's out of his mind. He leered at me. Then he said he wanted some breakfast. I never heard of such a thing. And then, Dr. Harvey, he struck me with a hot water bottle. Why, why, Jonathan, how do you feel? Well, uh, good morning, Dad. Morning. I want my breakfast. Why, why, of course, Jonathan. A nice, thin slice of toast in two inches of lukewarm milk. Who are you feeding? Me or the pussycat? Now, Jonathan. Steak. I want a steak and a cigar. Now, now, Jonathan, you're a very sick man. Just think, a big bowl of nice, warm toasty. I want some nice, hot steaky. Where's Gloria? Well, at the hotel. Oh, oh. Well, I, I don't exactly know where she is. She can have breakfast with me. Call her on the phone. No, no, no. Now, that's not necessary. I, I'll go get Gloria while you're eating. Unless you'd rather see her later. No, I want to see her now. Jonathan, Jonathan, no excitement, please. Johnny's fault. Doctor, would you mind stepping out in the hall? Very well. Now lie still, Jonathan. I'll be right back. If I die now, it'll be from starvation. <laughs> oh, what am I going to do? Do go to the hotel and get your fiance. But she's not my fiance. I never saw her before in my life. Johnny, I'm in no mood for nonsense. Well, I couldn't find Gloria last oh. night. I, I thought it was a matter of minutes, and I wanted him to die happy. You, you mean that girl who was here? I picked her up in the hotel lobby. Well, well go pick her up again. Well, I can't. She's leaving town. Doctor, quick, quick. What's a town in Ohio? Toledo. No, no, no. A small town. I, I, I can't remember. It starts with a... Please. Shh. That's it. Shelbyville. Shelbyville. You, you, you can't go to Shelbyville. And neither can she. I'm going to the station, Doctor. Maybe I can find her before the train leaves. Do you realize what you've done? 
That, that, that was my train. You made me miss my train. Well, thank goodness I did. I, I never heard of such a thing in my life. Look, I've explained it to you a dozen times. My father's better. He insists on seeing you again. And I'll pay you another $50. No, I won't do it. Let me go. I want to go home. That's just where you're going, young lady. Home. Now, wait. Don't, don't rush me. I've got to think. But it's too late to think. Here. Here's my father's room now. Let's go. But your butler just said the bishop's in there, too. Oh, my goodness, that's right. Are, are you sure there's nothing more I should know about myself? I mean, the girl I'm supposed to be? Well, oh, well, look, if they, if, if they ask you a question you're not sure of, uh, just smile. Like this. You can smile your way out of anything. Now, uh, go on, try it. Like this? Well, that's fine. Ready? Sure, I'm ready. <laughs> now that you've met everybody, my dear... How about your breakfast? Oh, well, 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 she's had breakfast, Dad. Yes, yeah, I had my breakfast. You uh, wouldn't like a nice little steak now, would you? <laughs> no, thank you. You could eat it here when everybody's gone. And she wouldn't like a nice cigar either, which she could smoke when everybody's gone. <laughs> it just won't do, Jonathan. Now, Miss Pennington, how did you find Mexico? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, I've spent a good deal of time in Mexico. Oh, but there's nothing like New York, is there? New York is a great place. I lived there for two years. Charming language. Ah, oh, senorita. El idioma aleman es para los caballeros. El francés para los hombres y el español para las mujeres. Uh, 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 why, uh, yes, indeed, Bishop. Yes, yes. Yo digo right. que los español están en los siato. No es verdad? Why, Bishop Maxwell. Well, well, you'll forgive me, my dear, but uh, that's what they say. Well, perhaps we shouldn't discuss it any further. Well, I... It, it, it was just that I, I hoped that I didn't... Uh, Gloria, I want you to do something for me. I, uh, uh, Gloria? Gloria? Oh, oh, yes. I'd uh, like you to go over to that wall and take the picture down. Take the picture down? That's right. Now you'll find a little brass button. Push it. Yes, go on. Push it. Oh. Now, you see that large black box? Father, Father, please, this is hardly the... T don't be an idiot. Oh, father, you you just don't realize... Bring it to me, my dear, the box. Father, I wouldn't do this if I were you. I, I mean, this necklace, it's rather... Well, if it will put everyone more at ease, I'll be happy to step outside the room. Johnny, what's the matter with you? Well, I, I didn't mean you, Bishop. I see. Well, well, I'll leave the room at once. Now, look what you've done. You've hurt Miss Dimnoggins' feelings. Well, uh, well, you just can't be too careful. Here's the box, Mr. Reynolds. Open it. <gasps> oh. All right, now, you've seen it. Come on, close the box. Put it away. Come on, come on. What's the matter with you? This necklace was my mother's, dear. Then my darling wife's. And now it's yours. Father. Oh, I, I've never seen anything like it in my life. Oh, let's put it back in the safe, shall we? Johnny, what are you so nervous about? Do you want to wear it yourself? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> well, I shall be running along. I, I shall be disappointed, Mr. Reynolds, if I don't see you in your pew for Easter service. I'll be there. Johnny, show the bishop out. Johnny! Oh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, goodbye, young lady. I hope you decide on an early wedding. I always say, marry in spring and the angels sing. Yes, I always say that, too. Goodbye. Oh, oh uh, doctor, while I'm gone, would you mind keeping an eye on Dad? This way, Bishop. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, could I put it on just for a minute? Don't ask me, my dear. It belongs to you. Oh, most attractive young lady, John. Most yes. attractive. Yes, yes. I've married a lot of beautiful girls in my day. Oh, and professionally, of course. But I have never seen any more lovely. Mr. John, sir. Yes, Robert? There's been a telephone call, sir. Your fiancé. Oh, uh, oh, oh, well, call Mr. Fiancé right back. Tell him to hold a while. You don't understand, sir. Your fiancé, Miss Pennington. John. Dear me. But, uh, but Bishop, uh, you're not obliged to explain your actions to anyone. Well, I, I, I want to explain. You see, that girl inside, she's, well, she's... Oh, I'm uh, disappointed in you, my son. Deeply disappointed. Robert, you may show me to the door. Yes, sir. Mr. John, about Miss Pennington, sir. Goodbye, Bishop. See you in church. Oh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll see you in church. Johnny, where are you? I'm here. Well, Johnny, I want you to apologize to Miss Dimnoggin right away. She, she, she's crying. I, I told her you were just a little overwrought. A little overwrought? I'm going crazy. The bishop thinks I'm terrible. Gloria probably thinks I'm terrible. And I think this is all ridiculous. Exactly. I'm going to Dad right now and tell him the truth. The necklace. What happened to the necklace? She's just putting it back in the safe. Oh. Well, 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 anyway, I, I'm, I'm going to tell Dad. Oh, you are? Well, you certainly are not. What do you mean I'm not? 
I certainly am. You want your father to get better, don't you? Now, that's a fine thing to say. And he's certainly not going to suffer a shock now, if I can help it. He's crazy about that girl. Well, I, I'm sorry. I'll think of something to tell Gloria. Something. Tell her the truth. What kind of a girl is she? Well, she's a wonderful girl. Of course. Yes, certainly. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. I'll tell her. She'll understand. Yeah. I'll just tell her. That's what I'll do. Oh, my kitten. She'll never understand. Mr. John, sir. I told you to call Miss Pennington. I've been trying to tell you, sir. She didn't call. It was a message from Miss Pennington. Yes? Miss Pennington and her mother are coming here. They'll arrive any moment, sir. Dr. Harvey. Yes? Might I trouble you for a shot in the arm? And now, while our curtain is down between Acts 1 and 2 of It Started with Eve, may I present a new kind of quiz. We have here tonight three service wives. My husband's in the Army. Her mind's a Marine. My Bob's in the Navy. And you're all keeping house and taking care of the family while your husbands are away? Yes. Yeah, that's right. Now, our quiz tonight is a peeve quiz on a subject you ladies know all about. Dishwashing. I gather most women don't like it too much, but what I want to know is just why. What's your pet peeve about this daily chore, Mrs. A? Oh, it's so boring. I mean, I don't like the way my hands and nails look afterwards. But, Mr. Kennedy... Just a moment, Mrs. C., what don't you like about dishwashing, Mrs. B? Well, here's something that irritates me. Big lumps of undissolved soap in the dishwater. They gum up the drain and leave dishes streaky and hard to rinse. Now, why do some soaps act like that? But, my dear... Mrs. C., you seem to have something on your mind. Well, I was just going to say, I never have those troubles. How's that? Well, I was going to tell these girls, it's because I use Lux Flakes for dishes. Well, I can see for myself how nice it leaves your hands. It certainly does. The difference it makes in the way your hands look and feel is honestly amazing. I know because I used to use one of those strong soaps myself. And Lux dissolves completely, never lumps up. Thank you, Mrs. C. Two good reasons for washing dishes with Lux. And here's another... Lux goes further, does up to twice as many dishes, ounce for ounce, as other soaps tested. In other words, Lux is thrifty. Why not try Lux Flakes for dishes tomorrow? We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. of It Started with Eve, starring Charles Lawton as Jonathan Reynolds, Dick Powell as Johnny, and Susanna Foster as Anne. It's half an hour later. In the master bedroom of the Reynolds mansion, old Jonathan Reynolds, enchanted with the girl he thinks is going to be his new daughter-in-law, refuses to let her leave. And downstairs in the drawing room, his unhappy son Johnny is making a valiant effort to explain the situation to his fiancée and her mother. And so I rushed down to the station this morning and brought her back here again. I just don't know how to apologize to you, Gloria. And you, Mrs. Pennington. Well, I'm sure it's all very peculiar. Johnny, dear, this girl, just who is she, darling? I don't know. I don't even know her name. Well, what on earth do you call her? Gloria. Oh. Uh, she was a hat check girl at the hotel. And to think your poor dying father believes she's Gloria. Johnny, how long do you think this nonsense can go on? Well, it's just temporary, Gloria. But suppose your dear father doesn't die in a few days. Uh, by the way, he's still improving? Well, he's getting better so fast that Dr. Harvey's ready to collapse. It's, in it's incredible. Oh. And as soon as it won't be too much of a shock, we'll, we'll let him meet Gloria. A shock? You think meeting my daughter's a shock? Oh, Mother, but, please. But, I'm sure Johnny is trying to do what he thinks is best. What I think is best? What would you have done? I'm sure I don't know. Well, well, I, I think maybe we'd better leave now. And as soon as Dad's up and around, you'll come over and get acquainted, and we won't have to hide down here. I refuse to permit Gloria to set foot in this house again until that... that girl is gone. Well, don't worry. I, I'll get rid of her some way. Of course you will, darling. Well, uh, I guess I'd better drive you back to the hotel. And leave her alone upstairs with him? It's all right. He's probably sound asleep by now. Oh, he must be very weak. Very weak. Now, look here, young woman. Are you calling me a liar for one teeny little puff? Now, you look here. I got you that cigar on one condition. You could have ten puffs. Ten, and no more. Exactly, and I've just puffed my seventh puff. It was the eighth puff. Seventh. Where did you ever go to school? And hurry up. The doctor's bound to come in any minute. Instead of the last two puffs, I'll just keep the cigar in my mouth. Uh-uh. It tastes mm -mm. good. Nothing doing. And if you don't... Mr. Reynolds, he's coming. Dr. Harvey. Well, what'll I do with this? 
Here, you take it. Me? What will I do with it? Never mind. I'll hide it under the blankets. There we go. <laughs> oh. That's better. Oh, you'll burn the house down. Here, oh, give it to me. Uh, 34 telegrams. Everybody in the world seems concerned about you. Read them to me later. From the governor? From General Appleby? Another from the whole staff of the symphony. Why don't you run downtown now? I have them all framed. A beautiful message from the Choral Society and, uh... Jonathan. What? I smell something. Get out of your mind. Oh, very distinct odor, too. Oh, that. It's the oil furnace. The fumes come up through the ventilator. Go down and have them fix it. Well, I, I certainly will. Uh, oh, and a very long wire from your friend Rodolfo Schrager, the impresario. And he... Wants to know if he can see you next Saturday. I wish you, I wish you'd go down and see about that furnace. The, the, the fumes are killing me. Well, well, if it's that bad, I, 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 Jonathan, what's that? That smoke? Oh, uh, steam. <laughs> My feet. I've got hot feet. Let me see your feet. Fumes from the old furnace, eh? Hey? Fumes from a smelling old cigar. Don't you dare throw that away. That's a $2 special. And just where did you get it? The bishop gave it to me. Fine old gentleman. <laughs> you know, the trouble with being sick is that you have to associate with doctors. Yes. Oh, uh, miss. Yes? Would you mind watching this ridiculous creature for a few more minutes? I've got to make some phone calls. Of course. Johnny's disappeared somewhere, but Robert says he'll be right back. And if you need help, which I don't doubt for one moment... Miss Dimnoggin's resting in her room. Oh, go and smoke my cigar. Go on. And if you don't get some rest, I'll give you something that'll make you sleep. Mr. Reynolds. What, my dear? Do you suppose... I mean... I mean, would it be asking too much if... Well, could I sing for him? Sing for that decrepit old pill roller? He never listens to anything without a stethoscope. I don't mean Dr. Harvey. I mean Rudolfo Schrager. I've studied singing for years. I don't doubt it, but Schrager comes here for pleasure. Maybe it would be a pleasure. Is there a piano downstairs? No, but it needs tuning anyway. Where is it? I don't remember. Could you hear me from way down there? Impossible. I'll try it anyway. Oh, please don't. <laughs> Sick man. No, 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 but don't get excited. I'll leave your door open. Mr. Reynolds, could you hear that? Of course not. And what are you, a piano player or a singer? Go ahead, break every chandelier in the house. Quiet now.
Lovely. It's a lovely, lovely voice. That, uh, that wasn't the radio, was it? No, it wasn't. She was singing. That's why she's delightful. Uh, oh, is the old man resting? What? Yes, he was... Uh, Jonathan, what are you doing sitting on the stairs? You get back to bed this instant. You can't do this to me, Jonathan. You know, I'm not a well oh, man. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, doctor. I didn't mean to upset him. You know, I, I'm the one who should apologize, my dear. You can sing for Schrager and anybody else you want to. And you will, just as soon as I'm up and about. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, you really shouldn't have come downstairs, sir. Who's downstairs is this? But, Mr. Reynolds, it's only a week since Dr. Harvey gave you up. I wish I could give Dr. Harvey up that quickly. Roberts! Roberts, I've been robbed. Robbed? Robbed. My waistline's gone. I've been tampered with. Look, look at these trousers. I used to have the finest waistline in town. Biggest, anyway. May I call your tailor, sir? Call my butcher. A few steaks will fix this up. And some lamb chops. It's incredible. Can't do this to me. Where is that witch doctor? I believe the doctor stopped off at the doctor's. He's had a touch of nervous indigestion. <laughs> Good. He'll, he'll be right back, sir, and I'm warning you. He... What do you mean by scaring me like How that? How dare you, Jonathan? How did you get down here? Slid down the banisters. And where's your nurse? Where is she? Never mind that. Where have you been? I've been to the doctor's. That's where I've been. I'm a sick man, Jonathan, and it's all your fault. Oh, there you are, you terrible old man. Madam, where have you been hiding? Sneaking off somewhere, no doubt, to telephone your bookie. <laughs> Why, by Miss Dimnoggin. Dr. Harvey, he kept me waiting up there for 20 minutes before I discovered the bathroom had another door. <laughs> right there. There, you're downstairs, but this is wonderful. Just awful. Come along now, Jonathan. Stop pushing me. Where's Gloria? Gloria? Oh, well, I, I, I'm just going to pick her up in, in, in a few minutes. What a girl. I've, I, I've never seen anybody so excited in my life. Excited? What's Gloria excited about? The party. I'm giving her a party. You're giving Gloria a party? She wants to sing for all my musical friends, and she's going to. Saturday night. Oh, no, she's not. Oh, yes, she is. And since you don't know who's coming, you can't very well cancel the invitation, can you? Mr. Reynolds, you're going to your room this instant and rest. Certainly, my dear lady. Give me your arm, please. Oh, oh, oh doctor, doctor, this is awful. Saturday night. No. A party. I'm talking about the girl. Uh, oh, Gloria. Oh, not Gloria. The girl he thinks is Gloria. Well, there's only one thing to do. I'll go see her right away and get her out of town. <laughs> Won't you come in? Thanks. Oh, by the way, what's your name? I'm Miss Gloria Pennington. I come from... I Boston. mean your real name. Oh, Ann Terry. Your chauffeur usually picks me up a little later, but I guess you want me to go back home with you, huh? Uh, well, uh, no. No? Miss Terry, not to come to the house anymore. Now, I'll just write your name in on this check, and you'll be free to go back to Ohio today. But, but your father, the shock... Uh, aren't you oh, I'll about... just tell him we've had a quarrel and you broke the engagement, and then I'll introduce Gloria to him as a friend of Dr. Harvey's. And uh, in time, well, you know. I see. Uh, look, your father was giving me a party Saturday night so some people could hear me sing. It, it's really so important to me. Now, really, Miss Terry. I, I tried for a whole year to have someone important hear me sing, and... And, and I wound up checking hats. Well, I, I could write some letters of introduction if you'd like, uh, assuming, of course, you can sing. Then sit down. I'll sing for you right now. All right, I'd be glad to. Holy mackerel, look at the time. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, but I promised I'd take Gloria and her mother to lunch. I, I, I'll tell you what you do. You you write me your address from Ohio, and, and I'll send the letters to you from there. And uh, thanks again, and, uh, well, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I debated all afternoon whether to tell you or not. 
Oh, it must be quite a blow to you, Dad. I just can't believe it, Johnny. I thought she was crazy about me. What a temper. She seemed so mild and gentle. Gentle? Look. Look where she slugged me. Hmm? And for no reason, either. Oh, I'm all broken up about it. Slugged you? Well, I guess it's all for the best. I'll, <laughs> I'll fall in love again, and yeah. then this will only be a bitter memory. Oh, uh, 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 Dr. Harvey mentioned something about bringing a couple of his friends over tonight. They'll probably be here in a minute. Uh, Mrs. Smith and her daughter. Why didn't she telephone me or something before she left town? She liked me. I know she liked me. Dad, I hate telling you this, but... You know what she called you? Hmm? Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, pompous, self-indulgent, overbearing imitation of a dictator. Oh, dear me. Pompous? Overbearing? Dear. <laughs> oh, well, uh, this must be Dr. Harvey and his friends now. I met them, Dad. Wonderful mm. people. I... Johnny! Hmm? Johnny, look, it's Gloria. She didn't go away. <laughs> oh, please forgive me, Johnny. I, I'm such a silly girl. Oh, I know I don't deserve any happiness. You, you shouldn't take me back. No, 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 dear. No, no, there's no need for tears. No, oh, it, no, it'll no. never happen again. It, it was all my fault. Johnny was a lamb, a perfect lamb. Johnny, Johnny, please say that you forgive me. Please. Well, say something. Well, you're darn right I'll say something. Dad, this girl here... <laughs> Dad, this girl... <laughs> for heaven's sake, Johnny, say you forgive her. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, your condition. Say it! Oh. Dad, now, Dad, Dad, don't get excited. Oh, I'll forgive her. I'll forgive her. It's better. Well, oh, Dad. Oh, Dad, are you all right? I think so. Young lady. Yes, Mr. Reynolds. You slugged my son. I what? It's all right. I like a girl with spirit. And what was it you called me? A pompous, uh, self-indulgent... Um... Uh, uh, imitation of a dictator. Yes, that's right, and it's true. That's me all over, and if you don't watch out, Johnny, you'll grow up to be just like me. Now, go on, make it up with her. Kiss her. Kiss her? Are you deaf? Certainly kiss her. Come here. If you were really like your father, you wouldn't have to be told. Why wouldn't, would I? There. That's a horrible kiss. All right, I'll go, but kiss her good. When you're through making up, I want to see you both. Oh, uh, did Dr. Harvey hide my cigars, my dear? Oh, yes. And did you hide them from Dr. Harvey? <laughs> mm-hmm. Good, I think I'll go and smoke one. <laughs> you. Oh, you ingrate. Keep away from me. I told you to get out of town. I was asked to sing Saturday night, and I'm going to. Go for my dead body, you are. And, and I'll tell your father the truth, but after Saturday night, and then you can have your Gloria for good. Oh, thanks. After you've been introduced to half of New York as my fiancé, thanks a lot. Oh, all I want is this one chance. Just wait till I get my hands on you. You have to catch me first. K- keep away now. Don't you dare! Well, how was it? Oh, fine, fine. Yes, yes, it was fine. Uh, about Saturday night, my dear, look, here's a list of the people who'll be here. But, but this is wonderful. I never dreamed I'd be oh, seen Jonathan. Before. Now what? Jonathan, I want you to meet two old friends of mine. Mrs. Smith and her daughter, Miss Rowe. <laughs> how do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, uh, Johnny, I, I, I didn't know your father already had a visitor. Well, I know, but... A visitor, you old chest thumper. This is Miss Gloria Pennington, ladies, my son's fiancée. I'm very pleased to meet you. Miss Gloria Pennington. Well, we really can't stay. We just dropped in to say hello. Hello. We were, uh, we were just on our way to, uh, to, uh... To a horse show. Yes. Horse show? What horse show? Uh, 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 oh, it's, it's a private horse show, Jonathan, at, uh, at a friend's house. Well, I'm afraid we can't offer you anything as entertaining as that. Mother simply adores horses. So nice to have met you. Come along, dear. Uh, let me see you to your car, Miss Smith. <laughs> Come again, ladies. Please do. Or so. Johnny, you promised me. You promised me that girl would be gone. Well, she was gone, but she came back. Have you got a handkerchief? Oh, here. Oh, now, please don't cry, Gloria. Don't worry. I won't. It's that lipstick on your face. Oh. Well, I can explain that, Gloria. Well, I'm listening. Well, I, I'm sitting here with Dad, waiting for you to arrive. Johnny. What? Where's my father? He just went upstairs. Oh, what happened? Oh, nothing. I, I started to tell him the truth, but, but I, I just couldn't. I didn't have the heart. Well, at least you'll admit you put me in a terrible spot. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, well, I, I can understand what prompted you. you. You want a career and everything. Did you fix things up with Miss Pennington? No, she finally forgave me. Oh, she's behaving wonderfully. Oh, she is like... Well, it's, it's been tough on her. I, I don't blame her much. It's her mother, mostly. Sure. Yeah, it's certainly been funny. 
I bring you here by accident, and my father likes you so much we can't tell him the truth. Oh, he'd have liked anybody you brought. Oh, no. You should have seen the looks he gave some of the girls I brought home. Oh. Did you bring home a great many? Mm, just friends, you know. Oh. Mm, he certainly likes you. Well, don't worry. I'll figure out some way to get out of the party. Well, it's not for two days yet. Uh-huh. Well, um, I, I guess I'll get on home. I'll telephone you tomorrow. Well, thanks. Thanks for everything. You said that once before. It still goes. Well, well, good night and goodbye. Goodbye? Well, of course. Oh, uh, uh, wait a second. You don't think that we... Uh... What don't I think? Oh, uh, uh, nothing. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Johnny. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille and our stars will return in Act Three of It Started With Eve. Now, here's Mrs. Jones cleaning up the breakfast dishes and... There's such a little bit of grease in this pan. Guess I'll just scrub it out. No, I won't either. I read yesterday that the government still needs tons of used fat. So I'll just run this through the strainer and put it in my salvage tin. Yes, Mrs. Jones is doing a fine job for her country. She and millions of other women like her made it possible to salvage just last month alone 16 million pounds of vitally needed fat. But do be sure to strain it. Much good fat is wasted if you don't. And even though the war news is good, the government says it's still necessary to save every drop. Yes, and here's why. Winning victories increases our fat shortage problem. Victories are costly. They demand more and more explosives, synthetic rubber, medicines, and other war materials. Used kitchen fats help make all of these. But won't the territory we're now winning back from the Japs help? Not for a long time. It'll take at least a year after the war to get our eastern sources of oils and fats started back to pre-war production. We ourselves must now make up the billion pounds a year that we used to import from the Far East. I guess no woman wants to feel responsible in the slightest way for holding up any of the supplies that are needed by our boys. Those supplies must keep going out in a steady stream. And it's your used cooking fats that will help bring victory sooner. So keep right on saving every drop. But please strain it first to take out bits of food or flour, or cool and skim clear fat off the top. And we still get two free red ration points and four cents for every pound? That's right. That's how important your government thinks it is to save those fats. And turn them in promptly to your butcher. Remember, strain and save every drop. Here's a simple daily job that every American woman can do to help that boy down the street who's risking his life for all of us. And now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. After the play, we'll be a little personal and delve into the private lives of our three stars. Now here's Act Three of It Started With Eve, starring Charles Lawton as Jonathan Reynolds, Susanna Foster as Anne, and Dick Powell as Johnny. Old Jonathan Reynolds is a happy man. Saturday night has arrived, and once again, his home is filled with guests, music, and good food. Surrounded by his friends and a platter of hors d'oeuvres, Jonathan... Uh, hasn't had a chance to become too concerned over the fact that a certain young lady has not yet arrived at the party. Unbelievable, Jonathan. You look simply wonderful. And perfectly streamlined. How do you do it? That was a terrible scare you gave us, Jonathan. Terrible. That was propaganda spread by Dr. Harvey. I'm never going to die. Oh, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan. What do you want? I have a very pleasant surprise for you. And how long will you be gone? They've just phoned and they're going to be here. Those two ladies you met the other night. You remember, Dad, Mrs. Smith and her daughter? No, I'm sorry that I don't. I mean, I'm glad that I don't. Oh, Mr. Reynolds, the telephone, sir. What is it? Miss Pennington, sir. Oh. Well, it's about time she called. I wonder what could have happened Happen to her. Happened to her when nothing's happened to her. Come along, Johnny. We've got to talk to her. But, uh, where are you, my dear? What's wrong? I, I have a splitting headache, Mr. Reynolds. I'm very sorry, but, but I can't come to the party. But the party's for you. I mean, all these people. I want them to meet you. Oh, I, I know. And, and I feel just awful about it. I can send the car right over. Well, Dad, I wouldn't force her. Well, better you... I'll come over and pick you up myself. Oh, no. Oh, please. Don't do that. I'd rather be alone, really. But when I was ill, you came to me. It's the least I can do. But, Dad, you're having a party. You've got the guests oh, in there. Go away. Please. If I should feel better later, I'll come over in a cab. Oh, dear me. Uh, don't you, uh, don't you want to see me? No, I don't. I don't ever want to see you again. Goodbye, Mr. Reynolds. 
Johnny. She said she didn't want to see me again. She doesn't want to see me again. I... Oh, Doctor, Doctor Harvey. Yes, Johnny. Have you seen my dad? Gloria and her mother just got here. Well, he must be inside there. Well, but he isn't inside there. I just looked. And he isn't in his room either. What? Well, you must be around somewhere. Then you find him. I've looked everywhere. Oh, Robert. Yes, sir. Where's my father? Have you seen him? Well, yes, sir. He ordered the car a few minutes ago. Said he felt like taking a little ride. The chauffeur knew the address. Well, here I am. But, but why did you come? I was afraid that you meant what you said on the phone. Are those your grips? Are you leaving town? Tonight. 11.30. Oh, it's not a very nice way for old friends to part, is it? We are old friends, aren't we? Yes. And you were going to leave without even saying goodbye? They... They'll be missing you at the party. Don't you think you should go back? I'm terribly fond of you, you know. You don't mind my saying that, do you? When you're as old as I am, you haven't got much time. You say, just say things right out. Anne Terry. That is your name, isn't it? Anne. I like it a lot better than Gloria. How long have you known? Only a few days, but that isn't important now. Without even saying goodbye. <laughs> What's that song there on the piano? It's a song I like very much. Would you would you sing it for me? I, I, I can't now. Not even that. Anne? What have I done to you? Oh, I'll sing it. Get a train in the morning? No. I can't go to the party. I promised I wouldn't. I know all about that, too. I'm a very smart old man. I've got big ears, too. But I didn't mean the party. We uh, two 
to go out somewhere and say goodbye properly. Hmm? But people would recognize you, and, and that wouldn't be fair. I know a nice, quiet little place where nobody knows me. Please. All right. For a few minutes. Good evening, Mr. Reynolds. Good evening, Henry. Well, look who's here, Mr. Reynolds. Check your coat. Hello, coat. Peggy. Thanks, Mr. Reynolds. Jonathan Reynolds lost a little weight, haven't yeah, you? Yes, ridiculous in this. <laughs> a nice, quiet place where no one knows you. I've never been here before in my life. So nice having you with us again, Mr. Reynolds. I have your table already. Oh, uh, thank you. And uh, Thomas. Yes, Mr. Reynolds. I forgot to tell my son where I was going. Oh? Would you telephone my house? He may want to join us. Of course, sir. Immediately. Just what was all that about? Oh, sorry, I was uh, just ordering a bite to eat. Here you are, Mr. Reynolds, a Reynolds special. Oh, uh, thank you. A cocktail for madame? Oh, nothing, thanks. Mr. Reynolds, why did you bring me here? Oh, it's the best place in town, you know, music and dancing. Everybody knows you. Well, yes, people see you with me, they'll tell other people. You know, there are people here who could open doors for you. I support the opera. You're seen with me, and it makes a difference, you know. All right, hold it, Mr. Reynolds. Hold it. Smile, please. Smile. <laughs> there, that's it. Thanks a lot. You know, that sort of thing helps, too. Tomorrow morning, our picture will be in the newspaper. Oh, oh, please don't let him do that. Why not? Because it isn't right. It's not fair. To whom, Johnny? Oh, won't you do something? Ask him to destroy it, please. Well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, uh, young man. Yes, Mr. Reynolds, yes, sir. Uh, her name is Ann Terry. And spell it right. T-E-R-R-Y. She's my son's fiancée. Oh, yes, sir. Thanks a lot. Uh, not at all. Uh, Thomas, come here. Uh, did you reach my son? He'll be right over, sir. Good, good. Anne? Yes? Well, I told him all right. You can forget about that picture. Thanks. Would you, would you mind getting the check now? Uh, what about my drink? What is that thing? Well, that's a Reynolds special. Coconut milk and vegetable juices. Dr. Harvey orders it for me. Terrible. Why do you drink it? Because it reminds me of Dr. Harvey. It makes me hate him, and when I hate him, I feel good. Do you want a, want a taste of it? There, there isn't any... Uh... Oh, no, 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 of course not. Here you are. Oh, that's awful. You, you drink this often? Always, I have to. Gee, it's, it's warm in here, isn't it? Yeah. I, I better slip my coat off. Yeah. Oh, it's just silly. Yeah. It's so warm. It's my eyes. Now, 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 now. What's this? Yes, you're in love with him, aren't you? You're in love with my son. I'm sorry. Could you please? Thank you, Chief. Certainly, of course you can. I've got some somewhere in my... Hello, what's this? It's a lamb chop. A lamb chop? <laughs> you I remember now. I stole it out of my kitchen. <laughs> What'll I do with it? Wait up! <laughs> This lamb chop. I didn't order a lamb chop. A lamb chop? Uh, I brought you this. Well, you don't think I carry lamb chops around in my pocket, do you? Oh, oh no, sir. I just can't understand it, sir. Well, as long as you brought it, I'll eat it later. And? And would you like to dance? Dance? I, I can't figure out what that music is, but I'll try to keep time. It's a conga. What conga was that? Oh, it's very simple. Oh. Now, stand up. Yes? That's it. Mm. Now, now, you do like this. One, two, three, kick. <laughs> Please, please. Come on, try it. All right. Uh, one, two, three, kick. kick. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Come on, we'll try on the dance floor. Now we gotta get it. Oh, you're wonderful, Mr. Reynolds. Look, they're all watching us. Of course I'm going to watch this, Kate. Look at the radio going. Oh, really? The girl they gave him up for dance. Dance, dance, for heaven's sake. Look at me, boy. I'm dancing. Stop it, stop it. Please. I'm dancing. Music. Hello, Charlie. Hello, Doctor. Jonathan, Jonathan, you can't do this to me. I'm not a young man. This is terrible. How did you two get in here? Johnny, I... Oh, what's the difference? We're making a scene. Come on, we're getting out of here. Jonathan, I'm going to put you straight to bed. One, two, three, kick! Oh, Jonathan! You talked my father into coming here, didn't you? I certainly did you not. You give it to him, good dear. You drag him out on the dance floor and make a fool out of him? Then you have someone phone me at the house just to make sure you break up the party. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Have you finished? Yes, and I hope you're finished, too. You've done plenty. Now, would you please get out of here? First, you let me tell you something. To begin with, I... Oh, what's the use? What do you mean, what's the use? Hey, come back here. Where is she going, Anne? Anne, come back here. Come back with you. Anne! Anne, wait a minute. What? Anne, get off the 
stop that train. Hurry. Don't you dare come near me. But it's Dad again. Oh, no. No, you've got to come. Now, here, get off those steps. Take your hands off me. No, there's no time to argue now. He's had another attack. Good. Let me alone. I'm going home. Oh, I, I could just... You're coming with me, don't you understand? He needs you. Well, are you getting on or are you getting off? Make up your mind, lady. Make up my mind? Nobody gives me a chance to make up my mind. I get pushed around like a medicine ball. Okay, okay, but hurry, hurry. <laughs> We'd better go right up. It's probably the end this time. Wait a minute. Here's the nurse. Oh, Miss Demnoggin, how is he? Is there a chance? He's very low. We've just given him an injection. He'll pull through all right. We can go up, can we? I think so. But don't you want to see your father first? My father? What do you mean, my father? Who's up there? Who's up there? Why, Dr. Harvey. <laughs> Hello. Father. <laughs> but I saw you collapse. I saw you. Of course I did. But when Harvey saw I was just faking, he fluttered to the floor like an awesome leaf. I'd better sit down before I start fluttering. And look, the morning paper, our pictures in it. You told me you had it destroyed. I couldn't do that, and if I had, they wouldn't have seen it. They? You mean Gloria, her mother? Yes, I just phoned them. They're taking the first train back to Mexico. I suggested the plane much quicker. Dad, what are you trying to do? Marry us off? That's ridiculous. Don't even care for each other. Certainly not. No, of course not. How could I care for a jellyfish? Oh, yeah? Well, how about that night you came here and put on that crummy act? Oh, please forgive me, Johnny. I don't deserve any happiness. Oh, brother, what ham? I had to do that because I wanted to sing. No. Oh, and I promised to write you some letters, didn't I? Well, don't worry, I will. Never mind. I certainly don't want to be obligated to you. For that matter, I don't even want to see you again. And? You don't really mean that, do you? I should say I... I... Well, maybe not. Oh, boy, am I a lughead. You... You're just about the most wonderful lug head in the world. Anne, come here. Yes? Put your arms around me. Like this? Uh-huh. <laughs> Anne? 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 Yes? Where did you hide my cigars? I don't find them anywhere. Return for a curtain call. Let's drop into our department store for a minute. That's Jane over there at the counter looking at some slips. Oh, this one's pretty. I think I'll take it. How about you, Betty? Do you want one? Oh, well, it's nice, but well, do you think it's practical? Oh well, mine always wear out fast anyway. Okay, I'll take a thirty-four. You know, Betty, I don't think you wash yours right. Oh, poo! Washing can't make a difference. I'm just unlucky. Tell you what, Betty. Here's a bet. Wash your slip your way, and I'll wash mine the Lux way. Bet you a new one, mine'll stay nice longer. It's a deal. So sometime later, Betty was spending the night with Jane. Say, Jane, remember those slips we both bought? Mm-hmm. Well, look, I've got mine on. I've only worn it ten times, and it's faded already. I told you so. Goodness. Let me get mine out. Hey, yours looks well. And it's been luxed. I kept track. Thirty times. Honestly. And it still looks divine. That Lux care for you. Yes, Lux Care keeps Undies color fresh and lovely looking three times longer. Actual washing tests prove. And saves you from frayed shoulder straps, pulled out seams, too. So don't risk strong soaps, hot water, or rough handling. Undies lead a long life when they lead a Lux life. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. Now we invite our stars, Charles Lawton, Dick Powell, and Susanna Foster, to come to the footlights for their curtain call. It may have started with Eve, but it certainly ends with orchids for all three of them. That's very nice of you, C.B., but you gave us a very amusing situation in tonight's play. But I don't understand the title. It started with Eve. So far as I can figure out, it started with Mr. Lawton. All I did was live, Susanna, and you can't blame me for that, can you? <laughs> Tell me, what business have you got living when you're drawing good money from Metro Golden Mayor as a ghost? Well, in the Canterville ghost, I'm not the real thing, you know. Not even a real ghost, huh? No, no, I'm just a humorous ghost. Mm. You mean, uh, you mean instead of scaring people to death, they, they die laughing? I mean that I ooze through keyholes and things like that, C.B. You ooze through keyholes? With that waistline? Susanna, you have a lovely voice. <laughs> you aren't changing the subject, are you, Charles? I'm trying to put it on a loftier plane. <laughs> well, my voice isn't as high as it used to be, Mr. Lawton. When I was 14, I used to be able to sing B above high C. Now I'm down to G. Good grief. She'll be singing bass before she's 30. <laughs> what do you have for the Lux Radio Theater next week, CB? 
Next Monday night, our scene moves to Louisiana, to the dark, mysterious swamplands, which create the mood for that gripping drama of the screen, Dark Waters. It's the lovely story of a young girl, haunted by the past and trapped by the present, and a man who risks his life to save her. Our stars are Preston Foster, and in their original screen roles, Merle Oberon and Thomas Mitchell. It's a very thrilling place, he'd be. Congratulations. And good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> I hope you get an extra slice of turkey on Thanksgiving. In a few days, all America will join in giving thanks that the torch of liberty burns brighter than in many years. And in this hour of thanksgiving, let us remember that this freedom has been dearly won. The victory ahead of us imposes a new obligation that never again shall the forces of tyranny be loosed upon the world. And one way to make sure of this is to buy more war bonds and give thanks that you are in America. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Preston Foster, Merle Oberon, and Thomas Mitchell in Dark Waters. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from... Hollywood. It Started with Eve was presented through the courtesy of Universal Pictures, producers of the current feature Bowery to Broadway, starring Susanna Foster. Dick Powell will soon be seen in RKO's Farewell, My Lovely, and can be heard every Sunday night on the Fitch Bandwagon. Heard in tonight's play were Arthur Q. Bryan, Charles Seal, Eddie Marr, Griff Barnett, Norman Field, Noreen Gamil, Verna Felton, Dora Singleton, Joe Forte, and Franklin Parker. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our Lux Radio Theater production of It Started with Eve, starring Charles Lawton, Dick Powell, and Susanna Foster, has come to you with the good wishes of the makers of Lux Flakes. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy. Reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Dark Waters with Merle Oberon, Preston Foster, and Thomas Mitchell. Thanksgiving is the day to try Priscilla's deep dish apple pie. It's a brand new pie bound to be a hit. Smooth cream trickling through spicy, fragrant apples snuggled under a tender, flaky, spry crust. Look for Priscilla's deep dish apple pie recipe. See the spry ad in newspapers and November